All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I am Sunil Verma and with me is VC Pramod. The headlines. CBSE Class 12 board examinations cancelled. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says decision on exams taken in the interest of students. Council for Indian School Certificate Examinations CISCE also cancelled its class 12 exams this year. India registers significant decline in active case load and number of fresh cases. Recovery rate improves to 92.09%. More than 21 crore 83 lakh vaccine doses administered in the country so far. Union Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan launches digitized versions of flagship health schemes on National Health Authority NHA's IT platform. Center introduces new system for processing of insurance claims under Pradhan Mantri Gharib Kalyan Package Insurance Scheme for health workers fighting COVID-19. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar chairs meeting of BRICS Ministers of Foreign Affairs through video conferencing. Ministers call for making global governance more inclusive, representative and participatory. And in French Open tennis, defending champion Rafael Nadal storms into second round, starting his bid for record-breaking 21st Grand Slam title. In the wake of COVID-19, we appeal to our listeners not to lower their guard and stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask. Maintain two gas kiduri for social distancing. Focus and on hand and face hygiene and get vaccinated. For providing COVID-related information and guidance to the people, national helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075 are operational. And now the news. The Union Government has decided to cancel the CBSE Class 12th Board Examinations. It has been decided that Class 12 board examinations would not be held this year. It was also decided that CBSE will take steps to compile the results of Class 12 students as per a well-defined objective criterion in a time-bound manner. It was also decided that in case some students desire to take the exams like last year, such an option would be provided to them by CBSC as and when the situation becomes conducive. The decision was taken at a high-level meeting chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi yesterday. The Prime Minister said the decision on Class 12 CBSE exams was taken in the interest of students. He said that COVID-19 has affected the academic calendar and the issue of board exams had been causing immense anxiety among students, parents and teachers, which must be put to an end. The Prime Minister said that the COVID situation is a dynamic situation across the country. He said... While the numbers are coming down in the country and some states are managing the situation through effective micro-containment measures, some states have still opted for a lockdown. He said, students, parents and teachers are naturally worried about the health of the students in such a situation. The Prime Minister said, students should not be forced to appear for exams in such a stressful situation. The Prime Minister stressed that, the health and safety of students is of utmost importance and there would be no compromise on this aspect. He said, such exams cannot be the reason to put the youth at risk. He directed officials to ensure that the results are prepared in accordance with well-defined criteria in a fair and time-bound manner. Meanwhile, Council for the Indian School Certificate Examination, CISCE, has also cancelled its Class 12 exams this year. In a statement, CISCE said, In view of the present situation of the COVID-19 pandemic in the country, the CISCE has decided to cancel the exams. The results will be processed on a mechanism which will also include the internal examination conducted by the school. The union government has said that India is registering a significant decline in active caseload and the number of fresh cases. With this, the recovery rate is continuously improving in the country and it has risen to over 92% in the country. Briefing media in New Delhi yesterday, Joint Secretary of Health and Family Welfare Ministry Love Agarwal said the country has registered almost a 69% decline in cases since the highest reported peak was recorded on the 7th of May. 
हम देखे तो पाते हैं कि जहां सात मई के समय में देश में प्रतिदिन चार लाख चौदह हजार उस गति से केसेज आ रहे थे वह घटते घटते बारह मई को जिस तरह साढ़े तीन लाख से कम केसेज सत्रह मई को वह घटते हुए करीब तीन लाख से कम केसेज होते हुए और चौबीस मई ऑनवर्ड्स हमने देखा कि वह ढाई लाख से भी कम होते होते आज हम एक वेरी पॉजिटिव ट्रेंड पाते हैं जब हम देखते हैं की देश में पिछले चौबीस घंटे में एक लाख सत्ताईस हजार केसेज रिपोर्ट हुए हैं यानी की अट्ठाईस मई ऐसी अगर हम देखें तो देश में प्रतिदिन दो लाख से कम केसेज रिपोर्ट हो रहे हैं यह अगर एनालाइज करें तो पाते हैं कि करीब 69 नाइन अप्रोक्सीमेटली सिक्सटी नाइन अराउंड सेवेंटी परसेंट केसेज में हमारे जो डेली बेसिस पर रिपोर्ट हो रहे थे उसमें हमने कमी पाई है ही सेट ऑलमोस्ट फिफ्टी परसेंट रिडक्शन इन एक्टिव केसेज हेज बीन रिकॉर्डेड इन द कंट्री विद इन स्पैन ऑफ ट्वेंटी डेज ही एडेड दैट देर आर थर्टी स्टेट्स एंड यूनियन टेरिटरीज इन द कंट्री विच हैव रिपोर्टेड अ डिक्लाइन इन द नंबर ऑफ केसेज सिंस लास्ट वीक Mr Agarwal has said the recovery rate is continuously improving in the country. He said the recovery rate was over 81% in the country on the 3rd of May and now it has reached 92%. Mr Agarwal said the country has ramped up COVID-19 testing for the early detection of cases. He said various laboratories are doing an average of 20 lakh tests in the country these days which is 2.7 times more in comparison to tests that were done in February this year. He said more than 34 crore tests have been done in the country so far. Mr Agarwal said over 21 crore 83 lakh covid vaccine doses have been administered to the beneficiaries so far across the country. India has administered more than 21 crore 83 lakh doses of covid-19 vaccine in the country so far. These include over 98 lakh healthcare workers who have taken the first dose and more than 68 lakh healthcare workers who have taken the second dose. Over 1 crore 57 lakh frontline workers have taken the first dose and more than 85 lakh frontline workers have taken the second dose. The Union Health Ministry has said that more than 5 crore 91 lakh people above 60 years have taken the first dose and more than 1 crore 88 lakh citizens have taken the second dose. A report. COVID vaccine is a crucial pillar in the fight against the coronavirus disease. The liberalized and accelerated phase 3 strategy of COVID-19 vaccination drive has already been started in the country. As per the Union Health Ministry, over 22 lakh 8000 vaccine doses were administered yesterday. Of this, more than 19 lakh beneficiaries were vaccinated with first dose and over 2 lakh 63000 beneficiaries received the second dose. In the age group of 18 to 44 years, more than 9 lakh 50000 beneficiaries received their first dose of covid vaccine yesterday with this the vaccination figure for the age group of 18 to 44 years has crossed 2 crore 13 lakh mark across 37 states and union territories upendra singh air news delhi member health niti ayog bk paul has warned that the outbreak of covid disease can increase in children if the coronavirus changes its form he said that the childhood covid disease is gaining attention in the country He added that the COVID-19 infection has not taken a serious shape among the children. He assured that all arrangements and steps will be taken to contain the spread of COVID-19 among children. Mr. Paul has informed that national expert group has been formed to review COVID-19 infections in children and approach the pandemic in a renewed way to strengthen the nation's preparedness. जैसे हम आगे बढ़ रहे हैं तो हर तरह के सिनेरियो के ऊपर नजर रखते हुए प्रिपेयरनेस को पुश किया जा रहा है बाय द डे और इसको अपडेटेड रूप में देखने के लिए एक नेशनल ग्रुप बनाया गया एक्सपर्ट्स का और मिनिस्ट्री की टीम्स के साथ मिलकर काम किया गया सिस्टमेटिकली और जो भी साइंस अब अवेलेबल है वो सबको देखते हुए जोड़ते हुए और देश के एक्सपीरियंस को समझते हुए डेटा को समझते हुए क्लिनिकल प्रोफाइल को समझते हुए डिजीज डायनेमिक्स को देखते हुए पेंडेमिक के बिहेवियर को देखते हुए और वायरस की नेचर को देखते हुए न्यू वे टू एड्रेस रिव्यूड रिन्यूड वे अपडेटेड वे करने के लिए गाइडलाइंस जो है वो इस ग्रुप ने हमें प्रस्तुत कर दी है Refuting a claim that only one dose of Covishield vaccine will be administered he said there is no change in the current schedule of two doses Covishield ka schedule bharat ka jo hai wo do dose ka schedule hai pehli dose aur fir 12 hafte pe dusri dose there is absolutely no change ko vaccine ka bhi do dose ka schedule hai pehli dose aur second dose 4 to 6 weeks ke baad yahi schedule leke hum apne वैक्सीनेशन कार्यक्रम को आगे बढ़ा रहे हैं इसमें गलत फहमी पैदा नहीं करनी चाहिए इसमें हमें कंफ्यूजन पैदा नहीं करना चाहिए हम सब ने इन दो वैक्सीन की दो डोजेज लेनी है प्लीज इसको फॉलो करिए और इसमें जो भी कोई भ्रांति हुई है 
उसको हम चाहेंगे कि वो दूर हो जाए अच्छी तरह से ऑन द मिक्सिंग ऑफ वैक्सीन मिस्टर पोल्स है सेट साइंटिफिक रिसर्च इज गोइंग ऑन इन वेरियस कंट्रीज टर्मिंग इट एंड unresolved scientific query he stressed that india will continue with the present strategies to fight with covid-19 disease he advised the people to follow the present set of norms pertaining to covid-19 vaccines till then there is no mixing of vaccine to hamara schedule bilkul saaf hai ko vaccine mila hai aaj to agli baar bhi aapko ko vaccine lena hai covid shield aapki first dose hai second dose bhi covid shield ho this is our sop please stick to this koi nayi cheez jab aayegi फैसला सिस्टमेटिकली किया जाएगा इसी मन से हम आपके साथ शेयर करेंगे तो ये मैं क्लियर करना चाहूंगा कोविशील्ड की दो डोज कोवैक्सीन की दो डोज और मिक्सिंग ऑफ वैक्सीन इज नॉट अ प्रोटोकॉल यूनियन हेल्थ मिनिस्टर डॉक्टर हर्षवर्धन हैज लॉन्च डिजिटाइज वर्जन ऑफ फ्लैगशिप हेल्थ स्कीम्स ऑन नेशनल हेल्थ अथॉरिटी एनएचए आई टी प्लेटफॉर्म द हेल्थ मिनिस्टर हैज लॉन्च द रीबैम्प्ड सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट हेल्थ स्कीम सीजी and the umbrella schemes of rashtriya arogya nidhi ran and health ministers discretionary grant hmdg on nhs platform making them cashless paperless and citizen centric speaking on the occasion dr harshwardhan said the initiative will enable seamless delivery of healthcare services to eligible beneficiaries under these schemes by making the whole process paperless he said this is a solid step towards digitization of healthcare services in uttar pradesh the number of new covid cases is decreasing sharply hence covid curfew will be relaxed in 64 districts more from our correspondent lakhimpur khiri jaunpur and gazipur districts are now included in the list of those districts where total active covid cases are less than 600 and where relaxation in covid curfew will be implemented now in 64 districts of state shops will open from 7 am in the morning to 7 pm in the evening in rest of the 11 districts of state covid curfew will continue as usual and night curfew will continue across the state the 11 districts where no relaxation has been permitted by the government are meerat lucknow saharanpur varanasi ghaziabad gorakhpur muzaffarnagar bareilly gautam buddh nagar buland shahar and jhansi sushil chandra tiwari air news lucknow madhya pradesh reported 1078 fresh covid-19 cases and 45 deaths yesterday while 4120 patients recovered from the infection more from our bhopal correspondent The weekly average positivity rate of the state is 2.2% and the recovery rate is 96.4%. The number of active cases in the state is 20,303. Indore has 3,406 while Bhopal has 5,328 active cases. No new case has come in Alirajpur district while one each new case has come in Katni, Khandwa and Mandla districts. Meanwhile, unlocking process has started from Tuesday. In Bhopal, markets have started opening. However, Markets are allowed to open only for grocery, medicines, stationery shops, as well as restaurants for a takeaway facility. The entire market of the city will open segment-wise. Pooja P. Vardhan, AIR News, Bhopal. Gujarat has recorded 1,561 new cases of COVID-19 yesterday. According to the State Health Department, 4,869 patients recovered during the last 24 hours and were discharged from hospitals. More from our Ahmedabad correspondent. Total 7 lakh 71,860 patients have recovered from COVID-19 in Gujarat till now. The recovery rate for the improved and reached up to 95.21 percent. Maximum 256 new cases of COVID-19 reported from Ahmedabad. Vadodara and Surat recorded 172 new cases each. 22 patients lost their lives yesterday. With this, the death toll due to COVID-19 in the state has reached up to 9,855. Gujarat has now 29,015 active cases. At present, out of which 472 patients are on ventilator. Meanwhile, 1 lakh 96,793 persons were vaccinated in the state yesterday. Yogesh Pandya, Air News, Ahmedabad. Tamil Nadu has received 4 lakh 95,000 doses of Covaxins, including 75,000 doses of Covaxin and 4 lakh doses of Covishield. State Health Minister Masubramaniam said that the fresh stock. would help the state to continue vaccination drive for a few more days the state will also procure vaccines from two manufacturers for those in the age group of 18 to 44 years 
So far, the state has received 11 crore doses of the vaccine, including the vaccines received yesterday. Till now, more than 90 lakh doses have been administered in the state. Presently, the state has a stock of more than 6 lakh doses for vaccination in all districts. More from our correspondent. Tamil Nadu has recorded at least 518 black fungus infections and 17 deaths due to this. The state government has issued a treatment protocol to medical professionals for the fungal infection. The state has registered more than 26,000 fresh COVID cases yesterday. The state health department informed that over 31,000 patients were discharged after treatment for the pandemic. Around 2,97,000 patients were under treatment for COVID. A total of 490 people lost their lives yesterday. Coimbatore continued to top the list with a maximum of over 3,000 fresh COVID cases yesterday. Chennai continued to register over 2,000 cases. Chengalpat, Erod, Salem and Tirupur had more than 1,000 cases. Joy, AIA News, Chennai. The centre has been disseminating awareness of four national level helpline numbers created for the benefit of the citizens during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Information and Broadcasting Ministry is promoting awareness about these helpline numbers through its various departments. The National Helpline of the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare for COVID-related queries is 1075. The Child Helpline number of Ministry of Women and Child Development is 1098. For senior citizens of Delhi, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand, the Helpline number of the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment is 14567. The helpline number of National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, NIMHANS, for psychological support is 080-4611-0007. Over the last several months, the government has created awareness through various instrumentalities and media platforms for creating awareness on the three critical issues, COVID treatment protocol, COVID appropriate behavior and vaccination. Private TV and FM channels are also advised to promote awareness of these helplines by way of a ticker or such appropriate ways as they may consider at periodical le- intervals, especially during prime time. You are listening to the Morning News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. CBSE Class 12th Board Examinations cancelled. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says, Decision on exams taken in the interest of students. Council for Indian School Certificate Examinations, CISCE, also cancels its Class 12th exams this year. India registers significant decline in active caseload and number of fresh cases. Recovery rate improves to 92.09%. More than 21 crore 83 lakh vaccine doses administered in the country so far. Union Health Minister Dr. Harshwadhan launches digitized versions of flagship health schemes on National Health Authority, NHA's IT platform. Centre introduces new system for processing of insurance claims under Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Package Insurance Scheme for health workers fighting COVID-19. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar chairs meeting of BRICS Ministers of Foreign Affairs through video conferencing. Ministers call for making global governance more inclusive, representative and participatory. And in French Open tennis, defending champion Rafael Nadal storms into second round, starting his bid for record-breaking 21st Grand Slam title. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. The centre has introduced a new system for processing of the insurance claims provided under Pradhan Mantri Gharib Kalyan Package PMGKP insurance scheme for the health workers fighting COVID-19. The Union Ministry of Health in a statement said that states and other stakeholders had been raising the matter that the processing of the insurance claims was getting delayed. It said, with a view to streamline and simplify the processing of the insurance claims, It has been decided to start a new system for approval of claims. 
As per the system, the due diligence will be done by state governments at the level of district collector. The district collector in each case will certify that the claim is in accordance with the standard operating procedure of the scheme. On the basis of this certificate, the insurance company will approve and settle the claims within a period of 48 hours. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar chaired the meeting of BRICS Ministers of Foreign Affairs through video conferencing yesterday. His Brazilian counterpart, Carlos Alberto Franco França, South African counterpart Grace Naledi Mandiza Pandor, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and Chinese Foreign Min Affairs Minister Wang Yi led their country's delegations. The ministers exchanged views on furthering intra-BRICS cooperation on the three pillars of political insecurity, economic and finance, and people-to-people -people and cultural exchanges. They also exchanged views on social and economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The ministers also discussed the need for reform of the multilateral system. They also exchanged views on the global and regional issues of concern, sustainable development and countering terrorism. Besides, ways to enhance intra-BRICS cooperation were also discussed. We have identified four key deliverables for our chairship. Reform of the multilateral system, counter-terrorism cooperation, using digital and technological solutions to achieve SDGs, and enhancing people-to-people -people cooperation. I'm very happy to note that we have made substantial progress on each of these areas in the past five months with the continued cooperation and support of our partners. On this occasion, they adopted and released the BRICS Joint Ministerial Statement on Strengthening and Reforming of the Multilateral System. The joint statement stressed on the urgent need for comprehensive strengthening and reforming of the entire multilateral architecture, including the United Nations and its principal organs. The ministers called for making global governance more inclusive, representative and participatory. The ministers also adopted the media statement covering various issues of common interest. The ministers reviewed progress in intra-BRICS cooperation. They call for timely establishment and operationalization of the BRICS Vaccine Research and Development Center. The ministers reiterated their commitment to Agenda 2030 for sustainable development. The ministers expressed strong condemnation of terrorism in all its forms and manifestations. They expressed their commitment to fully implement BRICS counter-terrorism strategy. Union Agriculture and Farmers Welfare Minister Narendra Singh Tomar has said that the dream of a self-reliant and digital India will only be realized by taking along the agriculture sector. Recognizing the importance of digitization in agriculture, the government is preparing a centralized farmers database. This database will be linked with the land records of farmers across the country and unique farmer IDs will be generated. A database having the details of about 5 crore farmers has been prepared so far. It is expected that the database will soon be implemented by incorporating the details of all landholding farmers. The available data related to PM Kisan, Soil Health Card and PM Crop Insurance Scheme have already been integrated. Union Agriculture and Farmers Welfare Minister Narendra Singh Tomar has said that climate change is one of the areas wherein opportunity is available for India and Australia to work together as both the countries had similar commitments. A virtual meeting between the between Mr. Tomer and Australian Minister for Agriculture, Drought and Emergency Management, Mr. David Littleproud was held yesterday. Both the ministers expressed satisfaction on the progress made in the field of providing market access to agricultural products. Australia has recently been given market access for export of Indian pomegranates. In Ladakh, the Tibetan people who moved to the region after the Chinese occupation of Tibet have been contributing to the local economic development. On the occasion of the Golden Jubilee year of AIR Leh, our correspondent has filed this report. The Tibetan population residing in Ladakh region, besides leading a successful life for themselves, also contribute in the local economic development of the region. The Chief Representative Office of the Sonamling Tibetan Settlement, Leh Ladakh, CRO Mr. Chetan Angchuk, speaks about his community's role in economic sector of the region. Tibetans in uh, Ladakh, the overall population till now is 7,550. But regarding the livelihood, all the economic uh, participation from Tibetans here in Ladakh, 40% nomadic life, their livelihood is depend on livestock, particularly those who are living in Changtang areas. And in Lele area, the majority of the Tibetans, they are doing business, 
uh, like the garments, small antique shops, and showrooms, the mobile shops. Around 15% are their levels. The peace-loving Tibetan people under the leadership of His Holiness the Dalai Lama always believes India as their second home and they continuously try to contribute to the society they live. With Ramesh Chandra, this is Punso Guangmo reporting from Le Ladakh. In the French Open tennis, defending champion Rafael Nadal has stormed into the second round, starting his bid for the record-breaking 21st Grand Slam title. The third-seeded Spaniard defeated Australia's 63rd-ranked Alexei Popirin 6-3, 6-2, in the first-round match. Nadal will take on Frenchman Richard Gasquet in the second round. World number one Novak Djokovic also kicked off his bid for a 19th Grand Slam title with a straight sets win over US player Tennis Sandgren, 6-2, 6-4, 6-2 in the first round. Earlier, Swiss tennis maestro Roger Federer stormed into the second round beating Uzbekistan's Denis Istomin. In the women's draw, world number one Ashley Barty has cruised into the next round after beating American player Bernada Perra. Fifth seed Elena Svitlona recovered from a 2-5 second set deficit to beat French teenager Océane Babel, 6-2-7-5. Venus Williams, playing the tournament for the 24th time and a runner-up 19 years ago, saw her 89th Grand Slam title end at the first hurdle as Russia's Ekaterina Alexandrova eased to a 6-3, 6-1 win over the 40-year-old American. And now let us take a look at the weather forecast for today. The national capital Delhi will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. The minimum temperature was 19 degrees and the maximum will go up to 36 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have a partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature was 28 degrees Celsius while the maximum is expected to be around 34 degrees. Chennai will see a partly cloudy sky. The temperature will vary between 29 and 39 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will see a partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature was 28 degrees Celsius and the maximum will go up to 35 degrees. Jammu and Srinagar both have a partly cloudy sky with the possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. The temperatures in Jammu will vary between 23 and 37 degrees Celsius. The temperature in Srinagar will hover between 13 and 26 degrees Celsius. Leh will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. The minimum temperature and the maximum temperature will vary between 6 and 19 degrees Celsius. Gilgit will see a generally cloudy sky with light rain. The temperature will hover between 17 and 34 degrees. Muzaffarabad will have a partly cloudy sky with the possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. And now an overview of today's newspapers. Safety a priority. Government cancels CBSE class 12 exams headlines the Tribune. Many students welcome move, seek criteria for evaluation, writes Hindustan Times. Centre says, will have objective criteria for results, reports the Indian Express. Daily COVID count lowest in 54 days. Fresh deaths fall below 3,000, headlines the statesman. Government links unlocking districts to low positivity rate, high vax coverage, writes the Times of India. The Asian age quotes the government as saying, no mixing of vaccines, no change in two-dose schedule. By mid-July, more than one crore persons to be vaccinated daily. IMD increases monsoon rain outlook to 101%. Central India to see 6% increase, reports the Hindu. And finally, Mercury at 17.9 degrees Celsius on the first day of June as city extends streak of breaking weather barriers, writes Hindustan Times. This is the lowest ever in June, mentions the Times of India. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. CBSC Class 12th Board Examinations cancelled. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says, decision on exams taken in the interest of students. Council for Indian School Certificate Examination, CISCE, also cancels its Class 12 exams this year. India registers significant decline in active caseload and number of fresh cases. Recovery rate improves to 92.09%. More than 21 crore 83 lakh vaccine doses administered in the country so far. Union Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan launches digitized versions of flagship health schemes on National Health Authority NHA's IT platform. Centre introduces new system for processing of insurance claims under Pradhan Mantri Gharib Kalyan Package Insurance Scheme for Health Workers Fighting COVID-19. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar chairs meeting of BRICS Ministers of Foreign Affairs through video conferencing. Ministers call for making global governance more inclusive, representative and participatory. And in French Open Tennis, defending champion Rafael Nadal storms into second rounds 
starting his bid for record breaking 21st Grand Slam title. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.